Uh, welcome to Theron's Forge. I'm Steve, um, my alter ego in Dungeons and Dragons is Theron. We'll talk a bit more about him uh, throughout the, the series of videos. But uh, we're gonna cover all sorts of things from uh, cosplay, cosplay disasters, which I'm pretty good at. <laughs> and uh, we'll be covering all sorts of things, D&D uh, &D related, tabletop gaming related, uh, crafting, painting miniatures, pretty much anything in, in those kind of geeky areas, uh, we will cover those. Um, if you've got any requests, then please let us know. Uh, so our first video is gonna show you, everybody, how we can turn something like this into something like this. So we'll run through um, everything, how to make the dugouts, helps if I get it the right way up. Um, I've got two of those. So one for each player and how to make the field and we'll cover pretty much everything that you need to know. Um, if there's anything we miss then please leave a comment and um, we can run, run another video focused on anything that you think we've missed. So what I've done here is I've got a couple of uh, these uh, EVA foam mats. See them there. Um, and I'm making the blood bowl field. So what I've done is I've worked out where this joint is. I thought it would be handy to have this joint uh, so that we can pack it up, take it when we go to and from uh, any events or going to our, um, our association um, where we're playing competition at the moment. Uh, basically what I've done is I've worked out on here you can see I worked out the distance there and there to get the center line um, and then we know that the pitch um, is 26 squares so 13 for this half 13 for this half and it's 15 squares wide um, what I've done is I've worked out uh, basically that um, uh, your miniatures, uh, the base of the miniature, how big you want the squares to be, um, and I'll put that up on the screen, um, how big the squares need to be, uh, and then I've worked out the total distance, um, split that in two, and measured from there to this end, and I uh, gave myself a little bit extra length, um, again, I'll put the, the measurements up on the, on the display uh, so that basically I've measured it out so that the length is just slightly longer. So we've got a little bit of room at the, at the end of the end zones. Um, and what I've done is instead of um, having the exact width or just a little bit of extra width, I've actually marked out to cut straight along here. So we lose these jigsaw pieces. Uh, but what we will have is a nice straight edge all the way around. These excess pieces, I'm thinking I will probably use those uh, to create a stadium or maybe the dugouts. Uh, but I do have the other two pieces underneath as well. So um, I, I don't like to waste things, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so one of the things um, that's really important when you're cutting your foam is to make sure that your Stanley knife blade is sharp. So a lot of these, you can rotate them. So I've actually just uh, done that before I took the video. Um, basically, you're only using this half of the blade. So um, as that becomes uh, blunt, you can swap it around and use the other side. Uh, I also like to keep a, a packet of spares um, the sharper the knife, the better, obviously, the cleaner the cut's going to be. So I'll, uh, I'll just show you quickly how I'm going to do this.
So once, once you score your foam, you can actually uh, run the knife through a little bit easier, a bit deeper, but it's really important with this thicker foam uh, that you actually cut just a, a line gently across the top first and then put the knife in a bit deeper, you'll get a cleaner, um, a cleaner cut, nice sharp edges. Now, I know I said that you'll get a sharper edge. Um, when we are working close to these, these edges where, we, where we're only doing a very small cut, it is gonna get a bit messy. Um, but where, where I've done along here, where we, you can see it's just a lot cleaner. One of the things you can do um, is you can still, like I could have still gone a little bit further in, gives you that nice straight edge. You can also clean up, you can probably see it's a little bit messy. Um, you can clean that up with, with a Dremel, uh, with a file, with a bit of sandpaper, whatever the case may be. Um, so I will probably get into that with a Dremel tomorrow, just to tidy it up. The other option is to get it right on the line and just cut the, the lugs. Just what I'm gonna try on this side.
Okay, so there we have it then. That's our basic uh, piece of foam that we're going to use. Having the, the join there is great because we can pack that up and um, take it with us into, into, uh, in, in a smaller amount rather than having the whole field. Um, I have seen where people have uh, put a bit of foam like a hinge. Um, something I may look at for, for future projects. Um, but if you have a look there, you can see it's slightly cleaner on this side where we took off just the lugs compared with a little bit messier on that one. Um, at the end of the day, it's not really going to matter. People aren't going to be looking at the sides too much. We will clean that up. Um, but what people will be looking at is the playing field. So now I'm going to mark out uh, where the squares are going to go. So what I've done is, uh, as I showed you earlier, I've worked out where the centre of the pitch is. Um, now I know that the, the width of the playing field is 510 millimetres, 51 centimetres. Uh, so what I'll do is I will measure what this entire width is, which is 57 and a half centimeters uh, we will go to the halfway mark which will be 25 28 and a half and if in doubt you just go 28 and a half there and then 28.5, which is not quite correct, so I will remeasure that. It's 57.5, so that will be 28. there, 28.75 there, we should end up at the pretty close. So from there we can work out, because it's the centre point, we want to get uh, 510. We can do a little bit of maths. Um, I will pop that up on the screen because I'm can embarrass myself if I try and do that uh, on film. Um, let's work that out. Twenty six each side of the centre. do is you can mark you can basically go 26 is the middle put that there mark the end of the ruler that way and mark your 51 centimeters the other one. that will give you your sides um, lengthwise we're going to uh, be doing the entire length is uh, 884 four millimeters so it's 442 millimeters from the center so, No, 
Ordnung. This is where we see how badly we've cut our foam. Okay, so once we've got the basic pitch marked out, we want to uh, work out the spacing for the squares, uh, mark those out, and basically draw on a grid. Okay, so we've uh, marked out the squares, and uh, I've just placed one of my Dark Elf miniatures to make sure that it fits within the square, uh, which you can see. Fits just perfectly. Um, now you could just uh, you could basically just uh, permanently mark those lines on uh, as part of what you're doing, or you can do what we're going to do, uh, which is to cut them uh, and use a heat gun to expand the gaps, um, which also helps to um, partially seal the foam, um, and then we'll uh, we'll end up doing some sealing and some painting over the top. Um, one of my friends has actually done it uh, with a Blood Bowl 7s playing field made from EVA foam uh, where he's actually cut the squares into exactly the right size and then placed them with exactly the same amount of gap between. Uh, now if you're going to do something like that then I would suggest that you would use um, some like a piece of foam or a piece of timber uh, that is exactly the right um, width that you need as the gaps between. Uh, you'd want to be doing that to run them um, in there or uh, setting up some kind of um, grid uh, that you could use if you're going to make more than one. But if you're only making one, um, I think this is probably a little bit easier. Um, another thing you could do as well is you could actually flip it over and mark out the other side um, because this foam is quite thick. You could probably get away with doing a double-sided um, playing field but I'm not going to risk it for this one. Uh, the other thing, don't throw away all those little off cuts. Um, you would be surprised. Uh, you'd be very surprised what you can use some of these things for. So, um, you know, that, that could be used for just about anything. Um, you could use it as a token or a playing piece for a game. Um, if you're someone who designs games, um, then yeah, you might find something that's good for a prototype um, for your game, game playing pieces, meeples or whatever it might be that you're using. So this is where I'm cutting the squares out with the Stanley knife, uh, cutting mat underneath, obviously. Uh, we only want to cut uh, about halfway through the foam, so we don't want it to go all the way through and create holes on the underside. Uh, it'll also help to make it uh, the, the, um, the cuts to open up a little bit better. Uh, when we hit it with the heat gun, uh, make those squares a lot more prominent. Uh, so um, taking care as you go that you don't cut yourself, um, cutting all the areas that we've marked out, so cutting across this way first and, um, and then cutting across uh, lengthways afterwards. All right, so I've finished cutting all the squares so we don't cut all the way through. Um, we cut maybe about halfway. Um, heat gun, run it over, and you'll start to see some of these will pop open. So it's really important that you don't put the heat gun too close. Um, but as you can see, it, it doesn't take much um, to get these to open up nicely. <coughs> 
If you leave it on there too long, it will actually melt the foam. But, uh, that's, you can see how nicely that's come up. Okay, so here's the finished product. Well, not finished product, but finished from the, um, the heat gun. Now, a couple of things to note. If you do get too close or spend too long in the one spot, it does start to cook. It's a little bit harder, get a different texture, but that's not a big deal for a blood bowl pitch because we'll just put that as, as wear spots uh, where there's been some, some, uh, some action, a bit of battle. Um, you can see the miniatures fit just perfectly in there. Um, so the next thing that we need to do with this is we need to uh, we need to seal it and then we need to paint it. Okay, so we're ready to do some painting. I've sealed it with uh, the with the PVA glue, um, so your, your typical white glue um, or wood glue. Uh, the, basically, what that does is protects the foam, so it's uh, when we paint won't absorb as much of the paint and it'll also help uh, later on when we're finished and we go and seal it all with some uh, with some varnish um, because I've got a, um, a varnish in an aerosol uh, it will a lot of aerosol will actually eat away at a lot of types of foam so this way we can be sure uh, that it's not going to damage the foam so what I'm going to be using today I just use um, just the, the cheaper stuff from the, the cheap shops uh, so I've got some black uh, because I want to get black down into those those grooves um, and also uh, because I'm going to be painting this a metallic silver uh, to simulate some steel checker plate type um, type material um, and metal uh, metallic paints um, particularly silvers and golds will come up a lot better with a black undercoat so a black base coat uh, the other thing I'll be using is some liquefying medium um, and we may end up putting a bit of water in as well just depending on how um, how runny it is uh, because we basically we're just going to be doing like a glaze so that it, it gives it a, a light coat of, of black and it gets down into the groove so um, I'll get to it. So the video seems to uh, stop recording once it reaches a certain time limit, but here is our base coat applied. So you can see that almost checkered plate finish. And that was really difficult to, to get the paint to stick to it. I had to uh, brush around in circles to try and get the brush to push the paint in where it needed to go but down in the grooves uh, the the liquefying medium did help and it did go straight down into those grooves so that's come up quite nice now I have gone with the black all the way over it because otherwise it looked a bit untidy but uh, the the silver is actually going to be only on the playing field uh, so we'll show you that process once this is dried and uh, we're able to dry brush that. So I started earlier today um, getting the, the dry brushing of the silver over the black. Um, and you'll notice it doesn't have that perfect finish. It's, uh, it's been left that way intentionally because when you're looking at like steel checker plate, it's gonna have darker patches. Um, when you look at the, look at it closer, it does look, I think it looks reasonably realistic. Um, I will show you what I'm doing. Uh, so those who don't know, dry brushing is uh, having a small amount of paint um, on the brush so that it's reasonably dry. And 
If you do have a wet brush, only applying it very lightly. So, this is my takeaway container lid. I love this. Always try and recycle where you can. So basically what dry brushing will do is it'll actually pick up the high points. So you end up with, in this situation, uh, the darker tones sitting low in the texture, which just really makes it pop. Um, the other thing is, because we want the grid to be, um, to really stand out, it's really nice to, to try and keep um, that contrast between the silver and the black. So um, if we don't have that contrast, then what we'll do is we'll make a, um, a shader, or, or I'll use a, a pre-made shader, or I'll make one myself, and just try and run it down into the grooves. Uh, but I think it'll probably be all right once we're finished. So what I'm doing here is I'm just wiping off as much off the brush as I can so that it's reasonably dry. When I first start doing it, I'm just applying it lightly uh, because otherwise it'll end up with too much paint applied and you won't get that depth. Okay, so I've finished with my dry brushing. I'm pretty happy with that. So obviously as you look from different angles, you'll pick up different, different shades. So it's not just pure silver everywhere. So if we look down here, you can see, this is what I was talking about when, when I was saying with the dry brushing, you wanna leave some of the black there um, and have a bit of silver over the top because that gives it, gives it that texture, it gives it that depth that you need to make it look a bit more realistic. Um, I'll see if I can find one that's got too much silver in it. You probably wouldn't want to go much more than these ones. You can see some of those have almost completely covered the black, um, but the leaving a bit of black there just helps to add a big difference. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I've started working with some blood splatters. Uh, so I've got this. Citadel paints. Try and zoom in. Um, but basically, that is a contrast uh, Blood Angels Red. Um, so it's supposed to be runny, which is what it is. Now, you will see that it does start to dry and it doesn't look as bloody. You know, when you first put it down, it looks like blood, it looks great. Um, but when it dries, it's quite red and shiny and it doesn't have any real substance to it. So this really is the first, the first stage. So I'll show you what I'm doing. Basically, I get my brush loaded up and I just flick and splat. So there is some substance to it. And then what I'll do is I'll be making up some darker colors. And what I'll do is with the darker reds, um, I'll try and simulate blood, which has more than one color. Um, I watched a really awesome video about um, about how blood 
um, coagulates. Uh, there's cl blood clots that are different colours and different consistencies and those sorts of things. Uh, it was a really, really good, useful video um, by a guy who's actually a miniature painter who also uh, is um, a surgeon. So uh, I'll have to find a link to his video so that you guys can check that out. So I don't want to go too over the top. You know, I don't want it to look like a complete and total bloodbath, but uh, that's a good start. And then I'll start making up some uh, darker reds to add into that. Uh, so as you can see, these are some fresh splats that I had before. They are already starting to dry out. Uh, so once they're dry, I'll add some new colours that add a bit of depth and a bit of substance and consistency uh, that, that'll make it look a bit more realistic. Okay, so I've, I've actually mixed up some, some colours here. So I got the um, a red and I added in some of the, uh, some of the shade uh, that Citadel paints do, which is the, um, the Druchy Violet, or Druchy Violet, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Um, so I mix that up and that's given us this nice watery consistency that's a sort of a darker red than what we've been working with. Um, and then I put some like a deep blue. So the color I used was um, Cantor blue. And I pop that in with the red. So what I've been doing is trialing, just taking a bit of, a bit of this on the brush, finding where I've got some blood splatter and just dabbing a bit in there. And so you can see that it looks almost like it's got a clot in it. Um, so I'm working my way along and adding in, it's harder when the, where it's these strips where it's really spread out. Uh, with those ones, I am just Just touching, touching it a little bit. And while it doesn't have that thin streak that it had before, uh, it will maintain that color consistency and I'll probably go over the top with um, some of some of this color as well. So we're going to actually create ourselves a dugout. Um, you guys can see that. Yep. So we're going to create a dugout for Blood Bowl uh, tabletop version. And uh, I'll start off with the base for it, uh, which is, I've worked it out to be 411 mil by 19 mil. Measure that out. Not sure where my pen has gone.
cut that out and we'll have ourselves a base. Then what we've got to do is we've got to mark out. Basically, I will build the section down here with the the, um, the re rolls and the turn counters, um, the wall, and most of the wall coming up to here. That'll be one piece that I'll do. Then I'll do the touchdown or score counter uh, with the wall here, and then I'll do the uh, entry and the steps um, area in the dugout. So we do each section separately. I've just had to re-measure a few things just to double check because it's been a little while since I've since I made this one. Basically, I've gone with the Dungeons and Dragons scale, which I normally do, um, which is 30 mil or three centimeters, which is actually the width of the steel rule. Okay, so those. So this has already been marked out from when I uh, when I did the previous one. So basically I'm going to do those two rows plus uh, these are one, one centimetre or 10 mil. So I'll add in the 10 mil onto that and cut it out. we want the sides as well. probably easier is to mark out all of your squares and obviously you need nine because you need the eight spots plus plus your um, what I call title squares so where the uh, re-rolls the round what time in the round it is so um, touchdown or score so nine squares at three by three centimeters. Okay, um, so I've done that, I've marked them out. Uh, the walls I've set at um, one centimeter or 10 mil thickness. I've marked all of those out, set that down onto the, onto the base. And then I need to build this wall here, which is your, basically your entry and exit point to the dugout and the steps. <clears throat> so um, we may already have some pieces that are cut thin enough, but um, at this point in time we don't. So I'll just measure roughly how long that needs to be. So I'm on a piece that is ten and a half by. width is there which should be so I'm on about 15 16 so this is very very this piece is very very close to what I need um, I think I want 15 16 
Definitely 16. Okay, 16 by... Sixteen centimeters by thirteen centimeters. I'll do that. So I've marked out my one centimeter wide walls to go around here is the entrance to the dugout. Now they don't have to be perfectly square, they don't have to be perfectly straight because they are stone uh, or simulating stone, okay? Um, those there, and what I'll do is I'll end up gluing all of those together and gluing them onto the, the base, and then I'll go along and I'll mark out the grid <coughs> that is in here, which is roughly three by three, um, maybe a little bit bigger. It doesn't really matter because it's not a playing field. It's just to give it that texture. Uh, what I will do <clears throat> as well is I'll just make some, some scores in the foam for the brick wall as well. Um, I'll show you when I've done that and I'll show you um, when the foam gets heated up how that looks. All right, so um, there is a little bit of noise coming from outside because when you're working with glue and when you're heating up foam, it's really important that you have uh, ventilation. So unless you're working in a nice, well-ventilated area, uh, it's really good to make sure that you've got a window open at least. Um, what I've done is I've marked everything out. As you can see, it is a little bit rough, but that's okay because it's stone. So um, as we heat it up, everything will expand and you will notice um, that it will start to get that, that textured look. Um, the other thing that we can do is we can um, put some scrape marks across the, the stone. We can also put little holes, we can put cracks. So when we do in the floor inside the, the dugout, we will put some with some cracks. Just gives it that more realistic look. Uh, you can even cut little pieces out of the corners to make it look like the stone's been crumbling. So like I've done there. I like to put three lines next to each other to look like there's been some claw marks. And just put some random dots everywhere. So with with EVA, it's um, very forgiving. So things will bounce back. If you were to do like you do with polystyrene, uh, with polystyrene you can run some. Uh, some alfoil over the top, a ball of alfoil, and it will put lots of nice marks on. Uh, with EVA, it's not so easy. I think if you heat it up first and then do it, it might work. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so we'll heat that up. So once you've finished heating it up, you'll find that everything does spread out, open up a bit better, giving you that better texture, making it look like stone blocks. Uh, the other thing that's really good to do while it's hot, not too hot, uh, just gently touch it to make sure it's cool enough to touch and just try and hold it flat on a flat surface uh, to try and reduce the amount of bending up that you get. Like it's gonna bend a little bit because of all of these cuts that we've done, um, but overall it will come out reasonably flat, flat enough to play with.
that's our blood bowl pitch and dugout uh, creation um, and instruction video. Uh, we hope that you really enjoyed it um, as much as we enjoyed making it and sharing this with you. Uh, the, um, we will um, be taking comments. Um, please do give your feedback. Let us know if you've enjoyed it. If you didn't, let us know that as well. And let us know what things you think we should include, what we can do to, uh, to spice things up a bit. Um, and uh, we'll be set putting up some more videos uh, in the near future. Um, thanks and goodbye from Theron's Forge.